of the select board, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have a Mr. Hastings, would you like to come up to the front, please? So as most of you know, we had the Bellingham Days, which was when was that now? That was a couple of weeks ago. Oh, uh, weeks ago. Oh, a month yes. and a half. Wow, a couple of weeks. <laughs> and uh, Kelly and I and the team decided that we wanted to pick two um, local organizations to donate the proceeds to, one of which was the Veterans and Memorial Day Fund. Mm -hmm. So tonight we are very excited to award you with a $5,000 check that you cannot cash tonight. <laughs> here's more for the prop. <laughs> um, as a result of the carnival and the golf tournament. So hopefully that'll go to good use. And you yeah. obviously do a lot of work with the various parades and the, we've got one coming up in a couple of weeks, right? For well, veterans. it's Veterans Day it's normally, right. not right. a parade. But. Right. So uh, you want to come over? Well, I don't know if you want to take a picture, Hillary, maybe? Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah come on, stand up. Yeah. Oh, stand up, it's the whole select board. Come on. Is that who signed it? I didn't sign it. It says Kelly, the select Kelly. board. <laughs> That's why I signed it. Come on in. We don't know. Look at the picture. It's not often that we get to give $5,000. I know. This is a big deal. All right, ready? Yes. One, two, three. We'll do one more. One, two, three. All right. And how about that? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Jim earned that. We've got to recycle this house. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for your ticket, I know. Thank that you very much. Fun. That helped me out. So thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> so, you know, too, though, I had a request. If I could, uh, I go about it, if we could do it. You know, today, Sal Pillow was buried down at Floor National Cemetery. Oh. And uh, you know, it was a great turnout at the church. But I'd like to know if we could, you know, possibly dedicate a memorial square to him in honor of his memory. I love that uh, idea. That could be something that could be uh, the, the $5,000 from the uh, gift fund could be used to, uh, for, for a purchase from the Veteran Memorial Day right. Committee in memory of uh, Sal, who I know was a, a World War II POW, right? Yep. Oh, no, that was Kathy Eldridge, who oh, was Kathy a POW. Eldridge. But, you know, Sal was in. Uh, D Day, landed right, in Normandy, mm -hmm. wound up in the Battle of the Bulge yeah. wow. uh, in the Ardennes Forest, where that was. So, yeah, yeah. did a lot. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, you can certainly come from that. Uh, yeah, get fun. Yeah, that was someplace he, you know, he lived this pretty much since 19, early 1950s on Maple Street. Right. So, you know, like this somewhere in that area. Sure. That'd be great. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We, can, we can work with you on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Great. Great. Thanks, Jim. Thank All right, folks. Thank you very Take much. Care. Thank All right. you, Jim. Stay Thanks, Jim. All right. Next up, we have the Cultural Council appointment application. Joe, you want to come up at the consideration sit up front here? How are you? Good. How are you? We're excellent. So far, so good, now that I'm here and dry. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and sure. why you're interested in I applying. wrote up a statement here. I can give you all a copy now or at the end, if you'd like one. Um, I'd just like to thank you for inviting me to come here to speak at this meeting. Um, to pull my long association with Bellingham. Um, I was born in Bellingham in 1961. Um, I grew up here. I graduated from Bellingham High School in 79. After graduation, I worked most of my adult life in Bellingham based businesses, including Hebert's Restaurant, which as we know is no longer there, um, Bellingham Boiler Works, which is no longer there, <laughs> uh, Marshall Equipment, which is no longer there. I see a trend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I change your strategy a little bit. <laughs> We want a thriving senior center, not a, not a business. 
Oh, I worked at my aunt's restaurant, Marie's restaurant, which was here for about 30 years in the center of town. Um, Bellingham Auto Sales, which is owned by my grand uncle, Donald Moore. My cousin Eddie now runs pretty much all of that there. Um, uh, I worked here until I was forced into retirement when I broke my back in 1995 while working for Marshall Equipment. At retirement, I relocated to Webster Lake to acquire <coughs> a more rural setting to raise my children. I've continued my association with my family, friends, business association since I retired in 95. Uh, my family's lived in Bellingham for almost 200 years. Started with my great great grandparents, Myra and Blackie Moore. They first settled in Bellingham many, many, many years ago. And I'm sure you all know most of my relatives, my uh, great uncle Donald Moore, who was a prominent figure in town here, his son Eddie Moore, um, my uncle Ed Woodland, who worked for the school department, um, my great uncle Walter Woodman, who took care of the cemetery for almost 40, 50 years, a long, long time. Um, I could name more relatives, but I really just waste your time being here yeah, and naming them all because I've like been that. here for many, many, many generations. Um, uh, it suffice to say that Bellingham is my central cultural focus. I've been a member of the Senior Center for the last four to five years. I've been actively involved in the art program in the Senior Center. I am interested in seeing that art and cultural programs thrive in this town of Bellingham. And I have thus volunteered myself to help accomplish this mission. And I thank you very much for hearing me out and learning a little bit about them. I don't know if everyone knows Daryl Crow. Daryl is the chairman of the Cultural Council. Yes, Daryl. How are you? No, I, I recruited Joe and, uh, because for the last four or five years, he's been working with us at the Senior Center. Uh, and uh, he's an organized guy to get things done. Uh, he's not just someone who shows up at a meeting, he, he works. And he's helped me on the Culture Council now and then uh, throughout the, the years that I've been on board. I'm now entering my fourth one, if you approve me. And uh, so uh, uh, I like him, I want him as a, a member. Uh, and uh, he's one of the most Bellingham focused non residents I've uh, ever met. And uh, so I just ask you to be gracious and allow him to help his uh, mission. Any questions from my fellow colleagues? The chairman is convinced that he would be a positive addition to the, the board. I'm, I'm all with that. I, no, I, feel, I feel the same way. Uh, Webster's a long ways away. You come here often. You must be very dedicated I'm to town of Bellingham. <laughs> and that's nice. It's nice whether you live here or 30 miles away. It's nice to see Thank your you. level of dedication. Uh, I appreciate it. So, I have any questions? How often do you guys meet, Daryl? Uh, we meet based on the uh, cycle we're in. Right now, we're meeting uh, uh, monthly, but we soon will be increasing to two, three times a month. Okay. Uh, between uh, October 15th and December 30th. And uh, because that's when we review the applications for approval. And so we need to have uh, our membership that can vote uh, solidified uh, in uh, early part of November so we can do the November 15th deadline. Okay. Michael or Kelly, any questions or comments? No. Okay. I mean, no disrespect, but I'm going to oppose it because I'm not going to break my streak of 12 years. So it's going to be a 4 1 vote. <laughs> so why don't you explain to him why, Michael? Huh? Why don't you explain to him why? I've never voted for anyone for any position who's not a Bellingham resident. And I mean, no disrespect, but it's if I do it here, I think I have to do it elsewhere. So it's well, I wish uh, you well. You already approved a non resident. Uh, on, uh, I abstain. Yeah, I voted no. 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 We're, we're not saying no. no. 
<laughs> Mr. Connor did not vote. He it was a four-one vote for. Her. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I didn't mean. No, I just mean personal. Yeah. 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 So. Right. Yeah. Miss Chu, I make a motion to uh, appoint Joseph Woodman to the Cultural Council. First for Mr. Spencer, second for Mr. Martinez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All right, four to one. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. your uh, interest you. and your dedication, and hopefully you have a very economic car that'll get you here. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Burning through a lot of gas. Really so yes, I do. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Plus, uh, I come down here and we paint together a couple times a week on top of that. So. Well, there you go. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. much for coming in. Appreciate it. Just hit the lights and buttons. Just click on that. No, there you go. All right, so uh, next on our agenda, are we following this order, Dennis, for um, um, capital improvements? What I would capital suggest is uh, a gift uh, brand of uh, Okay, Josie and Bernadette. Bernadette are, are on Zoom, right? Okay, so we want to do them one first. Item, yeah. So I would start there. Do you want to do the gift brand of first? We can do that in the business. Yeah, all right. Okay, so um, Bernadette, why don't we start with you? Hey, can you hear me? Sure can. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so the library is coming to um, town meeting this fall to request funding for exterior building maintenance of the of the library building, basically painting of the trim. Um, as the majority of you know, the exterior of the library building is brick. Um, all of the trim is wood, and there are some areas that are wood panels. We replaced some of the wood panels with vinyl, vinyl siding over the past few years. One side of the front was replaced with vinyl when we had the car accident a few years ago, and the other side was um, done a couple years later to match it, and that was done by BVT students. The remaining large wood panel areas, which are on the back roof of the building, um, we also hope to have done by BVT students in the spring of 22. So those will be vinyl sided. There are larger areas. Um, what we need to have done is the trim of the building, which is wood. Um, our custodian, Jim Marr, has been working with town carpenter Ron Paulhouse to replace the wood in the few areas that the sills are beginning to rot to ensure that the surfaces are ready for painting in the spring. Um, the trim has not been painted in, in over eight years. Uh, of The building, building trim has been painted in over eight years, and there are sections that are peeling. Um, we had investigated the possibility of doing a ceramic paint, co paint coating to make it maintenance free. Um, we contacted Rhinel Shield and received their quote for $38,640 with a 25-year warranty. Um, this is the quote that we presented to you with the warrant article. Um, for comparison, we got a quote from a traditional painting company, Arch Painting, which has been um, giving some quotes to the fire department. Their quote came in at $36,450. And since we expected Rhino Shield to be a much more expensive because it has a longer warranty, we were surprised the painting quote was so high. So we contacted Rhino Shield for references, and we found that they had not done any municipal or government projects. We then discovered that their quote did not include prevailing wage and that do, they do not do prevailing wage jobs. So we are looking to fund a traditional latex painting of the trim of the exterior of the library building. We will get additional quotes from additional painting companies, but our request for the town meeting warrant is for up to $40,000 for the trim of the exterior painting of the library building. Um, with the brick vinyl signing and a painted trim, the library exterior should be maintenance free for eight to 10 years. I should have said this up front. So our purpose for tonight, are we just reviewing fiscal year 2022? What's going to town That's meeting what, in, right. in November. Yeah, okay. So these are all items sure. that will be, or the departments are requesting go forward for okay. this November's town meeting. All right. So that- so the, the, I'm sorry. So the departments ahead. are looking for our approval. Like they've been in front yeah. of FinCom. They, they all, and that, they um, on, they're in the process, process. of going to those boards. And typically okay. those boards like, uh, prefer it to go before the board of selection first, and then we, um, ESA exactly. So, yeah, well, you were the at articles are sponsored. GIC heard all the over 50s okay. before this meeting today. Okay, so will you be sharing what you guys talked about? Well, this is a this, this is, is an under 50. Under, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Has this one gone to FinCom yet? It would uh, not, yet. not yet. No, we're going on Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, so, so Bernadette, uh, this yep. is up to so I was. I, I couldn't hear anything clearly. So the vinyl siding's been done. This is just for the painting of trim. This is painting of the trim. Yeah. And 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 you really think that 
that cost forty thousand dollars. I can have my whole house done yeah. for under ten with a ten year warranty. Yeah. It's, I, I, we will get a second quote. We, we haven't got a second painting quote because we had the rhino shielding one and then this came. So I will definitely get additional quotes to make sure that we're in line. But I mean, there's a lot of, it's, it's a big building and there's a lot of, you know, windows okay. trim and yeah, we'll get now, additional has, quotes. Has the building been inspected? Like if uh, the trim needs to be replaced, will it be replaced with wood or like a PVC? Have you had those? The, I'm just the, asking. Yeah, the Ron has been replacing. We've had a couple in the past couple of years. We've had some areas there where the wind the window sills were rotted, and Ron has been replacing them with with traditional wood, I <clears> believe. <throat> but I'm not sure. I can definitely find out about that before we go to before FinCom to find yeah. out. I'm not sure what what they've been. I'd like you. To, I personally would like you to because yeah. it just to me you, you replace it with PVC. The, the material that's out there today looks like wood when it's painted you never know the difference and it's going to last forever and why replace with wood if you're not staying on top of the painting we're going to be back to doing this again in 10 years from now right PVC, yeah, yeah you'll likely never have to replace it i mean if they had to replace everything with pvc i assume it'd be a lot more expensive it'll be, it'll be expensive oh it'll right. be expensive but it's a one-time thing right it's just a thought i can go through right now so again for so we Protocol. Just, we're just yeah, they're we, just sharing with us we're not voting or doing anything tonight well i, th I think it would make sense if you're, if you're prepared to to make a recommendation okay. so that the finance committee knows that you're supporting it as well i i'm in support but i'm not in support of it um up to forty thousand because it one it could be more it wouldn't be up to it she's asking it for forty thousand dollars we, we do have one it's, quote to 36,450. So it could be, we could ask for just up to 36,450 because that's an actual quote that we have for the project. So that's right. that's a that's an actual quote for just right. the yeah, painting. I, you might want to check with Roger Oakley's office. I painted the entire inside of the gymnasium for $15,000. It's way out of line. The, yeah. the price is just too high. Yeah, it's way out of line. It's, I, I, I just, I don't, I mean, I'm not a contractor. I don't know. I just thought there's a lot, there's a lot of it and it's all detailed work. It's not, you know, you're not painting a huge wall. You're painting, okay. you know, window trims and I, that's, yeah, we can, I mean, I think getting other quotes is definitely an answer. That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, and we were, we, I just got this second quote last week. So I haven't had time to pursue getting additional quotes, but I can definitely do that before town meeting. So do we want to say pending? So you're supportive of the the uh, supportive of painting it, but let's get the best. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm supportive of getting it, but I'm yeah. also supportive of doing it right. Mm -hmm. So we're not back here five, ten years and yeah. they're asking for more money. Yeah. You know, if we can go under forty thousand, you're replacing rotted woods with the PVC, yeah. which again looks when it's painted, you can't tell the difference. So, in our so composite no material, yeah. yeah. So we'll just say basically we're in support of approving or painting yeah. the trim. We'll just get a couple more quotes to make sure that. Yeah, we can we can get with you with uh, Tim Bernadette and uh, maybe tighten up a, a, a specification, get a couple more quotes, so we have a hard number to go to town meeting with. So uh, so suffice to say, the board is recommending the project, but wants to see additional quotes before right. finalizing mm -hmm. the number. Is that exactly. fair? Yes. Yeah, and I understand what. What uh, John is saying relative to the PVC option, we can yeah. certainly have a conversation. On I, that. Are you asking us just to replace the areas that are that are that are need attention uh, with PVC, or to replace everything with PVC? No, there's no need to replace it all. Okay, you can okay. Really replace a six foot piece of trim. Yeah. Yeah. And you can match it in there beautifully, and you wouldn't know, I, you know the Off the top of my head, I think that might have been what, been what Ron did, but I'm not sure, so I'll have to verify okay. that. That's all. I'm not yeah. trying to be hard. I just want yeah. to understand, you know. So that's what, that's what Ron's been doing to me with the press box and other things. Same it's thing. All, everything all be sponsored, right? Yeah, it really should. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, that's it. That's great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So, we so it, it would be good to have some mary i think the finance committee would like to know what the selectman's feelings are so if you're supportive of the project and you've asked bernadette to get a couple other quotes right. Right. so i'll entertain a motion and we'll come back with those numbers obviously. i make a motion that we're in support of, of uh, updating the trim on the library which includes possibly repairing some of the trim with uh composite material uh, and painting up to an amount of forty thousand dollars first from mr martinez do i have a second sure. Second from Mr. Connor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> None. All right. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank Thanks, you. Bernadette. Thank you. Have, Have a good, good night. night.
All right, right. Josie, you are up next. I'm up. Well, I, I noticed on uh, the list it has two things listed for FY22, but I believe one of them was already nixed by the Finance Committee. I have gone before the Finance Committee already. Um, the uh, replacing of the, 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 uh, the electronic keyboard has been nixed. So we're not looking at that. We're just looking at the HVAC system. Um, so over the next several the so few years, interrupt. yeah. Who nixed? Yeah, it hasn't, been, it hasn't, it hasn't no. been nixed by the. Uh, oh, it hasn't uh, been. No, it, it's it's something. <laughs> it's something that we suggested to. Yeah, it, it's something that we suggested spending forty thousand dollars on a message board outside of the senior center it didn't make a whole lot of sense right now. So I think a little bit more thought needs to go into whether or not the existing one can be repaired, or, or whether or not we go forward with the same type of message board that's in front of the middle school. I so, think it makes a lot of sense yeah. to have one out there because a lot of seniors drive by and get their information off that yeah. board. So it's just a matter of uh, collaborating on the type of sign, the funding, getting uh, a little bit more information on that. That's what my question was. Yeah, so it's, it certainly hasn't gone before. If it, had, if it had been nixed by the Finance Committee, you would have presented it to the Finance Committee and they would have told you they were nixing it. So I, okay. uh, that's internal discussions that we've had. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I apologize. Uh, well, the only thing that I did present to the Finance Committee that I thought was on the docket for FY22 was uh, regarding the HVAC system. Right. So um, we've got three, and I'm going to try and get the language right, we have three compressors outside, three AC units, large AC units. Each of them uh, operate to cool and heat, uh, or uh, to cool certain areas of the building. One of them uh, has continually failed. Every summer I've been there, this, th there's one in particular that causes, that has trouble. And it was finally diagnosed with the, um, it, each unit has two condensers inside that operate. And one of the condensers in the one that continues to fail and con uh, continues to blow fuses is not functioning. So the whole unit is operating on one condes condenser. So we went out and got quotes. We got a quote to replace the one broken condenser, but in the same quote, they sent us a quote to replace both because they feel like it's a time thing, like it, they're, the other one's gonna go at some point. So it, while they're in there, they would like to replace both. So um, the $15,000 represents replacement of both uh, uh, condensers in that unit. Um, so that's, that's what we're you know, suggesting for FY22. Tim, is, Tim McCarty spent a fair amount of time working with Josie on that, and, and obviously uh, this is the solution that's been recommended. So just a <clears throat> question. So it looks as though that there's three separate compre or four separate compressors for different areas, but are they going to be uh, so, one for 2022, 23, 24? I think Tim is on. Oh, oh Tim, okay. Yeah. So, um, Josie, you did a good job describing it. That was Thanks, perfect. Thanks, a little better. Um, <laughs> so, um, so there's three, she has three condensers to run her building and each condenser out there is a double. So what happens is each condenser, they, they, um, oscillate back and forth and they, um, they switch on and off. So it doesn't wear one out and it, it gives more capacity. One of them is totally dead inside the unit. And it's just running on one, and it's just at an age now where it needs to be replaced. That's why we're projecting this year doing one, which is a double. And then uh, Josie, is it next year we're going to do another double? Yeah. And then the well, following yeah. Year? Either do one other double or do both of them, uh, uh, two doubles next year. Okay. All right. So that that's basically it. They're just they're worn out, um, and one of them is running on one condenser right now. So. It's just, the, it's just the one for this fiscal year. Yes. Just the one for this fiscal year. The front and front, is it the front Mary, room? I got your notes. Yes, yes. it's, it's the, the front, front exercise room. So, yeah. so that you'll see a note uh, in my handwriting on yeah. the top of the project request sheet. We were exploring whether we wanted to okay. bundle, but because the other two units were still functional, um, we decided to back off of that and just deal with the one that is failing right now. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to recommend the AC unit repair for the front room of the Council on Aging Building in the amount of fifteen thousand dollars. Second. Sorry. First from Mr. Spencer. Second from Mrs. Grant. All those in favor, say aye. 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 
Opposed? None. I don't know why I just said I instead of I, but we got <laughs> sounds to like I. It's it, 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 to get me out. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else, Josie? No. No, that's it. All right. Thank you. Have a good, good night. Day. Thank you. You're welcome to stay on if you'd like, because it's going to be a rip roar and good time. Here. It sounds, it sounds <laughs> exciting. Yeah. All right. Take care. It always, it always is when we talk vehicles. <laughs> All right, so next, um, let's bring up the police department, please. It's been a record with the uh, Captain Improvements Committee for time. Yeah. 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 That's one I really want. So, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, all we have to share is a proposal for one vehicle. Um, I don't think I've ever sat here in 21 years and asked for less than two. We're going to go for one this year. And the lieutenant has a plan on how he's going to make it work. And, um, so we're asking for a new vehicle, uh, $61,200. That's a Ford Explorer. It includes the, the new radio and, and mobile data terminal. <clears throat> this would be a new vehicle to the fleet. It would be 412. Would you be a retiring vehicle? No. No. This is like I've been telling the board the last couple yeah. of years yep. we need to have yeah, more vehicles. Right. Yep. So this would be a new vehicle. Okay. So it's a traditional vehicle. Okay. I noticed the annotation of stealth. Does that make it like super cold and driving in it? Or yeah, it's a traffic vehicle. That was a traffic car. car. It's, it's a, a what? Traffic car. Oh, okay. Let's Sorry. not call that other word. <laughs> um, any questions for these gentlemen? And usually, you have information relative to the mileage of the vehicle, but I guess I'm just surprised or not. So, Madam Chair, it's okay. Um, I left on your uh, in front of your seats this evening two packets of information. One is an updated capital schedule, the second is some additional sheets that go into your binder. The fleet that you're asking for, Mr. Connor, is in that packet. It's kind of like that, do I uh, show the mileage that we used on each vehicle the last the last year? So it's in. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you envision that next year you would need three vehicles versus getting two now and two next year? No. So just the one this year. And then you're not That's thinking about the year, you're not thinking about anything the following year. Right now, knock on wood, you have one next year. One. So one this year, one next year. 2022 and one 2023. I got you. I get to knock on wood. <laughs> get the disclaimer in there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not going to hold you to it. The, the fleet's in good condition right now. This is the time to do it, to add the extra vehicle like I've been telling the boards the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So on that, uh, the, we have the fleet sheet, and then you'll have a the cruiser assignment um, sheet. And what I did was we have the, we have uh, five five recruits. We have four recruits uh, graduate today. We have the fifth one graduating at the end of the month. So you'll see new one through five on the roster. Those will, it basically shows where officers will be what cars will be used, which is basically the cars are I use. Mm -hmm. It just kind of gives you an idea that we have a five way move that as we go. So would this vehicle be projected to go to 2020? Um do that, but, no, I'm just looking at yeah. all the other vehicles well, that five, are projected five, replacement. You got everything for well, two years. Well, five years. So they're typically on a five year cycle, right? Yeah. Trying to get all the all the cars. Yeah. So this will help have an additional car mm -hmm. you know, spread out the load. Right. Mm -hmm. Well no, it'll smooth it out, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Kelly. All right, I'll entertain a motion. Motion First from Mr. Connor, second from Mr. Martinez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Thank you, John. Nice Thank you. Have a good evening. 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 Good
I know, I know. That's 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 while I went to bed last night. I went to bed seven to six. I'm like, I feel good, but they keep There's no way. <laughs> it took me a little one in the morning to calm myself down. Oh, really? What time did you get over? It'll be even later, I think. So we Hello. Good evening. We just have two uh, um, items that we'd like to discuss. Um, one is the replacing the carpeting at headquarters, uh, and the other one is replacing uh, the oldest fire prevention vehicle. Um, and we bet we have been through both finance um, and the CIC, so uh, this is our last stop on both these items. So, uh, Deputy Fulham, sure, start with the one. So, on the carpeting, uh, the building's 30 years old, the carpeting's never been replaced. We're open 24 seven, it gets a lot of wear. So what we've got is a proposal to uh, replace all the carpeting for $14,995.88. Uh, the vendor is the same vendor that did the town hall, you know, uh, several buildings, right? Library, library. So uh, mm -hmm. it is on state bid. So they're, um, yeah, they're gonna remove and replace all the carpeting in the, in the fire station headquarters. So that basically means that's the best price we can get, right? Basically, when you say state bid, it means it's state. been bid by a state right. office okay. uh, carpeting, and they come out with a price. And, and uh, when when they submit their uh, billing, they'll have to reference the contract number that reflects it there. Okay. And then, okay. And come in in okay. Uh, any questions on the carpet replacement no. from my colleagues? No, I don't know. Dan? No. Uh, I don't want to take 30 motion. years, no carpet. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Motion, motion to approve the carpet replacement at headquarters. And there's an amount of not to exceed $15,000. Second. First from Mrs. Grant, second from Mr. Spencer. Spencer, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, it's not. Take with my way of I want you to today. slow down, I take a deep breath, I, take a I, deep breath, take a full All right. The I, second one is uh, the replacement of our car three, which is our oldest fire prevention car. Uh, it's one of the command cars. And right now, the uh, the Explorer is one of the smallest ones and is having trouble fitting the equipment that we need to put in it, number one. But it's starting to show its age and uh, we're starting to have some problems with it. So it is time to replace it. Um, we looked at replacing it with uh, several vehicles, including uh, what they've been doing, which is the Tahoes, but they are unavailable for about 24 months. So we've had some struggles with getting a vehicle, uh, command vehicles. And what we found was that the only one that we had access to was the Ford Expedition. Um, we went back and forth through it. So we'd like to replace it with the Expedition. The cost of that is $67,509.30. And then the new fire radio, which is a dual band, $6,153.34 for a total of $73,662.64. I guess my question is, it's hard with COVID and just everything being so jacked up, is it really critical for you guys to have that this year? I mean, I understand what you're saying, yeah, That's we don't, I mean, we we met several times. I talked to all the MHQ, the vendors. This is not going away. So putting it off only makes it worse. They don't really foresee the, the cars getting better or cheaper. Um, this is a vehicle that's, you know, secured with, with potential to secure it now. Uh, they're, they're having issues all around. So as far as replacing it, replacing it later isn't gonna really change what, what we need. No, well, like more this explorer is a, a regular explorer that you would buy off the lot if you were a normal person. Mm -hmm. It's not like a police explorer, so it's it's just unique. It's, it needs to be replaced. Yes, just the um, so the current vehicle for the fire um, prevention captain that was a hand me down, correct? It was the from it was the chief's car. We, we stepped when it, was, when it was new, it was chief car, right? Yes. So, um, 
So the, the new vehicle is required to have maintain the same equipment as the chief the deputy's vehicle. Correct. So in 2013, that vehicle was able to maintain the same equipment as the chief's vehicle. Uh, why is it not now? So now we carry, there's more things in our vehicles. Uh, we use a different command system. A lot of things have changed. Here has changed. We now carry more, the chief and most of the command vehicles, we have air packs in them, which before the chief's car never had. There was a, there's a few more things in it and everything just seems to be getting bigger. Okay. All the safety equipment just gets bigger. Mm -hmm. now, Mr. Spencer, in the, in the 10 years since that vehicle was bought, we've had to comply again with more OSHA requirements, more NFPA requirements, which carries like command boards in there and all that other stuff, which we didn't have to when we bought that 10 years ago. So and this, that's, that's one of the this vehicle will be for the fire prevention cap. This vehicle will be Fire prevention is vehicle one of the fleet. And usually, what happens is we the chief gets a vehicle, then it goes. Everybody gets stepped down. Uh, this vehicle goes to me. My vehicle goes to that, and then it goes down the line. Right. And my, mine's only a couple years old. Has nine thousand miles on it. So the deputy's is five years old. So that will he'll get he'll get mine with the nine thousand. The, the uh, his car will go down to the fire prevention captain, and you'll get the new one. And I'll I'll get the new one. And uh, because it's because it's an expedition, I'm not sure how much room is going to be shortened because it's not a towel. But that's just the way, the way it's going to have to happen. So uh, I guess my question is then, why is this vehicle used for fire prevention, Captain? If it's stated here, so that that's what we're replacing. Then? We're replacing. That. So what happens too is with the fire prevention captains, the two captains, they do a lot more firefighting. So their vehicles tend to get a lot. The, Dirt, a little dirtier and they have a lot more wear on them inside compared to the two. I, I get my question. I get I understand that. I guess my question is at town meeting, is this vehicle going to be presented as a vehicle for the fire prevention captain or a vehicle it's for a, the fire chief? It's a command vehicle. It's one of the command vehicles that we do. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I Maybe it's just my ignorance, but I'm not sure why. Why wouldn't the vehicle just go to as the command vehicle? I mean, to add on, why would it go to the chief? Chief has a vehicle, it's nine thousand miles. It's perfectly fine. Why wouldn't we just give this new vehicle? Or is it just a protocol in your department? And that's the way it always always works. That's the way There's, it's always been. It's just the way it always works. I, and it's not a personal yeah. thing. I'm just asking. Yeah. No, like why? You know, why would it go? To, chief just got a brand new vehicle last year. Not every it's two years ago. Well, it's not. Not you. It's, it's the town's vehicle. It's the town's vehicle. Well, and everything just it, it's down. your vehicle. Yeah, but everything just floats down, and that's okay. that's just the way we've always done it over the years. All right. questions? What did um, FinCom? You, you haven't gone before FinCom. Yes, we have. have. I thought, so I thought, what did they say? They were supportive. In favor. Yeah. Kelly. Well, capital improvement is in favor of it, but capital improvement doesn't, they just look at the need and right. it didn't get into who is actually going to be driving that vehicle, just that there was a need to replace okay. the Explorer. And that shouldn't be our decision, anyway, right? Who well, actually, it should be our decision. Finance. Who drives the vehicle? Well, I mean, I'm just FinCom I, handles the dollar signs. Mm -hmm, CIC handles what the need is, and the board of selectmen basically encompasses. No, the no rest. but my, I guess my select point board. is select board. select board. But I guess my point is we're a board, it's his department, the chief decides who drives what vehicles or has the vehicles, and that's the way it's always been. I, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, just to me, I'm, what you do is fine. It's your vehicles. It's if there's a need and we have the money, then we should do it. If there's really not an extraordinary need, so I'm not use that word, then I would not be in favor of it. Right. If there's not an extraordinary need for this vehicle, we try to get 10 years out of our vehicles, and this is at 10 years, and it's just time to move the place. Mary McKinnon, if I could put you on the spot. Sure. You know all the things that are in front of us. We've got Mr. D. Martino, who's about to come in front of us with some big ticket things. What's your recommendation in terms of you don't have to say yes or no, but you see all this stuff that's coming in front of us. And as I read through this binder, we've got a lot of 
equipment that needs to be replaced. So what, what do you think in terms of what you see? You wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't be seeing it recommended or put before you for November if we hadn't programmed it for funding. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. you're not so seeing funding, anything, right. you know, okay. uh, so anything that isn't pro. Is that fair? That is, yeah, without exactly. putting Mary on the spot. I mean, we've obviously. That wasn't met. trying to put you on the spot. Dennis and I have done a first pass to make sure With that the what we are bringing yeah. exactly, but yeah. but in, from a financial perspective, what we are bringing forth is something that we are able to afford in some fashion, um, whether okay. that those the final funding source is free cash or retained earnings or borrowing or, or what have you. You've got them programmed out here in front of you, but. We wouldn't be bringing forth a, a list of items to ask town meeting in November if we couldn't afford those items that we're bringing forward to. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Right. The vehicle before this, how old was it? We talk about 10 years old. So we got something 10 years old, five years old, two years oh, old. The, the next one up. The, the one that we got rid of. Yeah, we got rid of so I guess my question is should we be getting rid of a vehicle every five years so that of the three vehicles that we're driving nothing is more than 10 years old right unless it's unless it's you know if it if it's still able to be driven um, safely on at high speeds on emergencies we, we don't come and replace it we only replace it when we have the need and this, this has this is as you know I drive a similar similar vehicle that went three hundred thousand miles at eighty thousand is it unsafe and it's yes. a lot different though for us that vehicle might run for eight hours sitting at a fire scene where yours doesn't you know so this doesn't this has additional to the mileage it also has a lot of wear so there's a lot to it rather than just miles of driving normal wear and tear the acceleration is different the braking is different how they've driven. You know, it's, it's this just, vehicle gets driven just as much as a cruiser. However, with you know, they're replacing their their top notch explorers. That, you know, that this which this one isn't after three to four years all the time. We're we're, we're getting 10, 10 years out of these. Well, it's because they they get a hundred thousand miles and they turn over the vehicle. It's good, you know. It, it's a lot, you know, they do get more wear and tear than a regular standard. Like I said, I wouldn't ask for replacing the vehicle like that if I thought it was safe. Mm -hmm. So when we went to look for a trade in value for it, and you know, it, it's worth nothing. Okay. Okay. Any find nothing. For a trade in value. So it is going to go to the, um, the town mechanics, they'll decide whether or not it's how safe it is, what status it is, and if it can go to somebody else, some other department where they would feel it was safe to do, depending on how much work they had to do to it. Uh, as far as trading it into the vendor like MHQ, they don't have a value on it. They would they would not give us next to nothing. But the 2013 MHQ. stock explorer with 80,000 miles on it is going for like 15, 16,000 dollars on a lot right now. I'm not saying that MHQ. Yeah, I just that's know that why I said our value. I went used car shopping like that. Right, exactly. Than yeah. do anything else. No, I which the town money. could auction, and but that's who we get our state bid from. And, uh, yeah. you know. Any other comments, questions? Right, I don't entertain a motion. Uh, make a motion. Um, to replacement of car three MHQ train vehicle with warning lights for 67,509.30, fire mobile rating installed for 6,153.34 for a total of 73,662.64. First from Mr. Martinez, do I have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Connor. All those in favor say aye. aye. Quick discussion oh, just sorry. to put in that it's been recommended by Fun Pin Company and CIC, correct? Yep. Right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Can I ask for a two minute? Yeah. Mr. Mark yeah. Martin, comes up this Steve and Chris, can I just ask another follow up question? Yeah. I'm, I'm shocked that they said two years to order a vehicle. Yeah, yeah, we were too. Well, GM shut down their plant. The, uh, the state fire marshal was looking yeah. for one. He's going to an expedition. We couldn't even get one from the state fire marshals, from the state police. That means we're open. 
No, we're still alive. I mean, the board's still being considered on. Well, we, uh, she, uh, okay, well, she's got, can I ask a question on engine one and five? So you got these listed as fiscal 24 and 25. So fiscal 24 is the suggestion to replace a 29 year old vehicle. And the following year in fiscal 25, we're going to replace an eight year old vehicle. Am I reading that right? Yeah, it's the it's, so we changed numbers on the vehicle, so I put the wrong one. So it should be engine three. Yeah. In, in what year? Twenty four. Uh, Twenty five. So that's a two thousand seven. So that it's still going to be eighteen years. How does one vehicle go eighteen and another one go twenty nine? <laughs> uh, it's very easy to answer that question. It has to go all over the place. When it when it when it was the first line piece. We probably put 90,000 miles on it within the first year because it has to go north, south, because we don't, we don't have enough uh, personnel. So the runs have increased, so that makes the, the mileage increase, it makes the wear and tear increase. And, uh, so the, the it's just going to be difficult to spend $1.3 million within well, we're not, 12 months. We, 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 have to, we have to really sit down and go over this capital plan because I think the town needs to make some decisions on how they want to operate the town because it's so long. Um, as you know, OSHA shut down, shut down station three. It can't because of its, it, just, it can't be a fire station. So, I mean, technically we have station one and we have station two, you know, and Station two is, you know, going on 30 years old and it needs a lot of work and it's it's getting small in there. Um, now that we have, you know, um, women firefighters now, uh, we've lost space in the bedroom. And, you know, when one person, one female is working, the other, there's two beds in that room, we lose a bed because the guys have to, there's only four bed, uh, beds in the other bedroom. So the station's getting smaller, the guys that, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just growth. It's just, it's not, you know, it's not something that's, that's out of the ordinary. It's just the growth. And, right, so you know, so it's either we're going to, you know, beef up and man station one and move the lines on the response criteria, or we're going to build a station down north to, to cover that, to cover that. It, I don't know which direction the town wants to go in. And, you know, personally, I would say, um, you know, if you're not going to man a station in the north, then I wouldn't build one. There. But I would highly advise we staff station one so that it can work independently on its own and move the lines up so that station two covers this half of the town, station one covers this half of the town, and that way it's covered. All right. I feel like I missed part of this conversation, okay. but it sounds like it's something okay. we want to circle okay. back to at it another was, point for right. sure. No, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right, Donna E. Martino. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. It's not like you're doing your recording. Hello, mm -hmm. this is Don E. Martino. I could do you. I'd like to jump to uh, here, page four, item number four, because the uh, fire mm -hmm. folks are here. And it's a it's all it's listed as a DPW item. It's a fire apron a at the fire headquarters. And we're requesting, although there's a little glitch in the way I presented it, I, I confused Mary in the way I put it in, uh, as to when it would actually be constructed so that I thought some of the half of the construction would be done in a different fiscal year. Uh, it's not like a phased project. It's it's one project, $256,000 is the engineer's estimate as we sit right now uh, with some COVID cushion, uh, obviously, admittedly from the engineer, and this will replace the fire apron that uh, we've been talking about doing for it's long since uh, well, probably five, five to last five, ten years that uh, Dick Ranieri was the chief. So, um, what we are, it was going to be included with the underground storage tank removal project, which is um, because of this idea of the old house, dig into an old house and start to fix something. 
and what should what you think is going to cost two hundred and fifty dollars? The engineer's estimate is close to eight hundred thousand dollars. So we're going to hold on that and try to get go forward with a bid, open a bid before town meeting, probably early late October or early November to have a, a hard price to do the fire rate. So that's where we stand right now. And again, the engineer's estimate is uh, two hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars. Um, capital improvement committee discussed and approved. Yes, this is recommended by capital improvement. Questions? I just kind of since you brought it up with the underground storage, that the EP deadline is that going to be requested this it, year? Too, it's August. Of, it's August of two thousand twenty-two. Yeah. So we will. We will need to be kicking us kicking that around um, for May. Okay. And, and probably, uh, I believe Mary is hoping that we can get some some aqua funds to help the floor. Right. It's yeah, not yeah. going to go. It's not going to go away. The deadline in the regulations is five years, and that would be five years. Uh, we haven't heard anybody from DEP pushing hard. Uh, I think you know, as long as we're, we're obviously discussing it, we know we need to do it. I don't think they're going to find us for something that's not leaking. It's just sitting in there. Well, that was my question. That's why when you have it, you need, it needed by 22, 23. Yeah. All right. As long as we have a plan in place, they probably won't bust shops. Well, this we hope you do. <laughs> this is an example of an item that we've had a lot of discussion on and haven't presented you right. for funding now. It's on. It's there. It's on the radar. Okay. Um, we just didn't feel that we were quite ready to bring it forward in yep. November. We wanted to wait till May. We're hoping that there's some grant funds there. We know we've got to do it. It's just we want a little bit more time internally to figure out the best way to proceed with it. And that's why we're not. It's all been designed. Uh, the engineers have done, Weston right. Sampson's done a lot of work on it. It was going to be bid with the apron. And we just feel why yes. hold off on the apron. It's been an issue yeah, for 11 right. years. There's, there's freezing issues with water coming into the, the, mm -hmm. the bay and, and icing up. And, and there have been injuries associated with the, the right. and, uh, apron. Yeah, that's been kicked down the. Uh, Kick down the roof for quite some time. So. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully we get a better number when it's actually bids will be in before town meeting, so it may be a better number. But that's the engineer's estimate. Do we want to just so do you know, individual items or have John just full presentation? Or? There's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I mean, yeah. 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 All right, I'll right. right. entertain a motion for uh, motion for the Kelly guy to say. <laughs> uh, motion for the headquarters um, apron replacement in the amount of $256,000. Second. First by Mrs. Grant, second by Mr. Spencer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, yeah. none. Okay. Uh, so just Thank a dumb question. Support. Why is this under DPW and not apply? It was because it was included with the underground storage tank. And, and that's why Don had suggested bringing up all the yeah, which, yeah, the it's it's here. Much my office was probably for Don's, yeah, Don's been hearing the handling the engineering and the okay. All right, next on. Right, let's go back to the page, page three. You, item number whatever. Item number one, tree warden. Tree warden has requested fifty thousand dollars for uh, the removal of stumps and placing it. You know, he's you know, requested two hundred thousand dollars for removing of stumps and planting of trees, and this is the sort of the next logical step after you cut several hundred trees down um, and build a dead from from Joe and Gypsy Moss. So he has not got much of anything as far as a, a significant additional any kind of request to augment his budget for tree removal, but um, a large area, I'm sure, a large number of trees were cut. And some of the stumps are would be better to be removed. That's the fifty thousand um, looking for, right? Fifty thousand is it's a sort of a like we did with a tree removal. I think mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's a phasing. Mm -hmm. um, we'll and uh, the capital improvement committee is planning to meet with uh, tree warden Mike Burr to sort of get a clear idea. So they did not have a recommendation at this point. We didn't think that you know. He requested two hundred thousand to remove a hundred stumps and plant a hundred trees. So fifty thousand. We don't know what that's going to cover, and we're wondering who's. We want to hear from Mike about are there citizens who are complaining that they want a tree 
you know, back or their citizens with any of the stuff we want to, because, you know, Roland brought up a really good point, which is we just took all these trees down because they're in the right of way and they were dead and they would be in danger. So why would we put another tree, yeah. tree back in that same spot? So we, before we made a recommendation on that, we wanted to talk to Mike and hear from him because he's the one that's actually doing um, all of that work. But is this 50,000 more for the stump grinding? And yeah, it's, well, it's, it's stump removal. Probably. Not all can necessarily be ground, right. Right. Um, especially if you get rocks bold or stone wall, the grinding doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, and that's sort of where we actually have the discussion that I had the discussion with Mike about, you know, the town buying a stump grinder. Yeah. And that's, you know, renting when you can't, I wouldn't risk it because as soon as you hit a rock, you own the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And again, we have um, we have plenty of rocks on them, so, uh, so this ro is, roadside stone walls and so forth to hit a rock and it's just bad. This is kind of along the way of roads yep. when we approve a certain amount to do what you can do, and once the money's out, then you have to request. Right. right. He, he you know he asked you know probably projects like this it's you know it's like he says 100 trees and 100 stumps. You give him. Enough money to do 25 trees and 25 stumps, he prioritizes and then it takes a few months. Yeah. Or it may that may you know plant more trees and remove fewer stumps, or you know, who knows? But that's you know, it's it's obviously it's sort of a general and that's why it's a good reason to bring him in and talk about it. So, so it's kind of a general issue, request. The capital improvement issue was with the planting of the new trees versus this fifty thousand dollars. Well, and right the right stump right. removal, like who's actually complaining about all you know, so right. we we wanted to talk to Mike before we said anything and I think that's the the right move. So can we entertain a motion contingent upon yeah, I think this it's information? A thing to hear, have, uh, like, that? Okay. That makes sense? Yep. All right, do you want to make the motion, Phil? Sure, I make a motion to, do you want to just make a motion to pass over this until capital improvement? Yeah, make the recommendation. Talks to Mike. Right. The so tree warden. Yeah. All right, first by Mrs. Grant. Second. Second by Mr. Spencer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you. All right. Okay, the next is a replacement. Uh, it is item number one, small dump truck replaced B14 uh, with, with a new, new plow, but uh, just replaced B14 with a new plow, a truck with a new plow. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just replacement of uh, one of the vehicles in the fleet. A bit of confusion as to whether it's a, a 2007 or a 2001, but um, yeah, it's, it's worn out. As a matter of fact, I'm fairly certain this one won't get registered again. We'll get another sticker. So, any questions on the small dump replace B14 with new plow? Is that what we're talking about? I'm on the right page. Yes. 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 Motion to recommend. First second. by Mr. Spencer, second by Mr. Martinez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Right. The next item on the top of page four. Is uh, this is a small dump replaced? This is actually just it's not a dump truck, it's uh, the, the chassis is going to be replaced on the hot box. This is a 1999 International, was a fire, uh, fire department ambulance that was handed down to us. We took the ambulance box off the back and put a hot box on that was wild. When I was reading that, I'm like, wow, that's clever ingenuity, right yeah. There. And uh, we, we run it, we run it into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the hot box is still in good shape, and we'll move that over to the new truck. But we do need a new truck in it, and the hot box is relatively heavy. You can't put it in the back of a small pickup, so it's it's actually the exact same quote as for the last truck with uh, items such as the plow and other things crossed off that we don't need as options. So the hot box basically holds the hot asphalt. Is that what you mean by hot box? Yeah. The, what the hot box does is allows us to to patch potholes with hot mix because it keeps. We buy we buy usually two tons morning from Riley. Uh, sometimes they have to go to aggregate, depending on Riley's open, and then that can be used for hours on end as opposed to a regular uh, open hot pot, uh, especially in the winter. Once yeah, it, yeah. It's, once once it, it hits two hundred fifty degrees, you throw it away. Right. Okay. It becomes a big black rock uh, in the hot box, and you can we don't, but you can have you can leave stuff in there overnight, heat it up the next day, um, and still use it. So it's um, it keeps it hot. We've, and we've actually got a second one 
last year because it is, you know, it's just such an asset since the use of cold patch has almost been completely eliminated, except for when we're, we're stuck in the hot dog plants up kind of open or broken down. So. I think we'll I see ready. that truck often on my street. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So we retrofit at 2013 Ford Explorer with 80,000 miles. <laughs> we'll be getting that. <laughs> I may be driving that next year. <laughs> That's going to be your chance, yes, right? Stop criticizing my car. <laughs> I very much hope we trade that thing in just on time. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'm looking forward to a new car, though. Who was around to the, uh, the Ernie Bach new to use stuff? Anything under anything out of six digits is brand new. <laughs> All right, so All right. any other questions, comments? I'll entertain a motion if we do not have any. Recommend the truck cab chassis hot box truck in the amount of 65000 Chassis. 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 What did you say? Chassis. Chassis. <laughs> second. First for Mr. Spencer, second for Mr. Martinez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. Well, it's just not me. Mispronouncing uh, things. Okay. She probably doesn't like my yak. Yeah. 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 about skipping the underground storage tank, which is item three, item four, we covered with the fire department. Right. Right. That's 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 talk about tonight. We're down to item seven. Um, this is $200,000 for, for the South Main Street TIP local funding. Um, the state will do the construction of the project, but there are items that are yeah, non participating. That's all right. There are items that will be required and that come up as I experienced in the Pulaski Boulevard project that the state will not pay for. They won't fund under their there in the Federal Highway Administration rules and regs. For example, we will to, um, to get the stormwater management we want to achieve, uh, the Concom wants to achieve, and we want to achieve, there'll be two, in, they call them inline. Um, uh, like storm scepter units that remove suspended solids before um, runoff is discharged out into a waterway. So there were two of those we'll have to put in, and Mass DOT doesn't fund those. That's already $50,000 of this 200. It also allows us to try to take care of our uh, res residents and butters because Mass DOT couldn't care less um, and sometimes goes in and, and not necessarily does anything wrong. But fairly minor expenses that will make our residents le less affected by the project. Um, they won't fund them. So it's it's nice to have that little pot of money, and probably a half of that will go towards during the course of course of the two year construction. Mass DOT will probably have a bi weekly um, meeting during the construction season that they want our engineer there, and they haven't get they haven't got any money to pay for. Our engineers design the project, so that's. That's, you, we need to have, I've learned at Pulaski, we, we happen to have because of the way it was appropriated and we need to have some money in order to sort of make these things better for our, our residents of others and get the project done without asset. Okay. $200,000 is your question. Questions, comments, feedback? I'll make a motion. Um, South Main Street tips, local funding needed to mitigate impact to butters for $200,000. Second. First from Mr. Martinez, second from Mrs. Grant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Moving on to trash. Moving on to trash. We have uh, a, pickup, a pickup which will replace P6. And P6 is a, a 2004, excuse me, 2004 F-150. Replace it with a bigger size and a uh, plow capability. Our plow fleet, which is important because we have fewer and fewer vendors. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay, motion. Okay. Yeah, I, Kelly's making it first oh, by Mrs. Do we have comments? But I, I just want to get comment. I just think it's interesting that we're sitting here with Mr. DiMartino and right. we're talking about replacing vehicles that are 2004 vehicle. And you can't tell me that these. These vehicles don't get the snot beat out of them every single day. Okay. And I know that's where we're going. And I know that's some of the odds that we have here, but it just drives me absolutely. And I, I see, I, I just can't imagine those fire vehicles get beaten up as much as your vehicles do. I, I don't know. I, I don't drive them. It's, it's anecdotal at best because, you know, I have no proof 
But I just like you're also not from, driving them 60 I'm miles not, an hour through I'm, the center of town. Well, that's true. Yes, yeah. and they, I didn't get they that. They better not. <laughs> <laughs> they better not. Yeah, right. They may fall. But we got a bigger problem. <laughs> and I know. And, and again, and, and I, yeah. again, been on the board for a long time. It always seems like we have absolute fire. <laughs> we just do. Mm -hmm. Everyone else gets it. We just and I don't know why, mm -hmm. but it just seems like if the vehicles we're replacing a ten-year-old vehicle. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but you know, we're we're going to spend a half a million dollars here on vehicles at DPW, right? Yeah. And it's in five minutes. Mm -hmm. But we, we give fire department a real hard time. But I just I don't know. I'm half struggling. DPW, half the DPW fleet of vehicles is was former was former fleet fire. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So to recap, I'm sorry. We used the 1999 at the truck for a long time. That they've got it like a 2000. <laughs> First from Mr. Spencer, second from Mrs. Grant. Is that what just happened? Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Maybe time. in the future we need to have DPW come before fire, and then this information comes out, and it makes a stronger argument for us when we're going back and forth on these. Okay. Well, the the other thing, if there are questions in the future, what we can do is is arrange for a time when the vehicles you can go and I'd see like the vehicle. I like, so you'd like to see the vehicle. Yep. Sure. And that's something maybe in, in the future we, we could certainly do. So we've done that in the past years ago. Different boards wanted to actually see a fire truck before it was determined that it, it wasn't. Uh, that's a big ticket items coming up next year, right? It, it's just difficult when when the right, chief yeah. and, the, and the deputy chief fire and police are telling you that they feel a car is unsafe but their people are right. driving at high rates of speed etc to, to to pretty fast too bad and, and they need i drive my taco pretty fast yeah. Yeah. i make this a serious but, comment i think when we buy a vehicle mm -hmm. there should be some documentation as to what was projected to be its useful life mm -hmm. if you buy a dump truck right now that you know is going to be plowing and we say we're going to keep it for 15 years, a board 15 years from now is going to be able to say that was prudent and that was expected and we're not debating it. And if it goes 20 years, great. But if it goes seven, was it a mechanical issue? Did we not maintain it? All right, moving right along. Recycling center, automated vehicle entry gates. Yeah, we've got uh, actually the, it started with, with 40. I don't know if you have 40 or 25. 25 mm -hmm. is a number there. They have 40. Oh, they okay. have 40. It needs to be adjusted. Yeah, it needs to be adjusted oh, to 25,000. We got some, we got folks from our uh, the people who did our security doors. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be, let me see, let's go to this right. Um, your Alex is, you know, it's a, just a simple swing. It's, it's not like we're worried about people walking in there, it's people driving in. So we'll have a, a setup where, um, We'll have hopefully our guys will have fobs they can swipe it and get in. Uh, anybody getting out will be able to get out and we'll stop them. They want to, and, and we'll have surveillance cameras, so we'll have a shot from the plate. So we'll have control getting in, control getting out. Uh, there's just way too much access down there between the firing range uh, and all the other things that go on. Uh, during, during you know, when the center's open, the doors they'll just be open. Uh, but it'll be something mounted in the middle and the two. Some things that come up uh, Does that move the, the chain link yeah. gates down or yeah with the chain link yeah the chain link gate we, we can consider whether we want to close it or just not i mean we're not worried about anybody walking anything right in there and stealing yeah, yeah, yeah it's the vehicles that are going in there and dumping that are problem so um, so anyway that's All right, uh, so we're adjusting that to twenty five thousand. yeah that's yeah because mm -hmm. when i put 40 and i was it was a very random guess and i did go to quote uh, oh yeah i sent it later uh, from our from the company that said they could do it for that. Any other comments, questions? Mm -hmm. Now I want to do the motion. Motion to recommend $25,000 for the recycling center automation of vehicle entry gate. Second. First from Mr. Spencer, second from Mrs. Green. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. South Main Street Stand Pipe Rehab. South Main Street, this is. This is a 20 year lifespan item. Uh, we did it in 1998 last time. It's a, it's a sandblasting and repainting of the interior and exterior, uh, which will last roughly 20 years. And needs to be done every 20 years. So, um, you know, pat, patch any, any uh, pits they find in the inspection. But it's a, it's a pretty routine, other than the fact it's a very expensive. This is our smallest standpipe. So there'll be another one coming down the road in three to five years, which will probably be twice this amount of money. And that's Chestnut Street. 
Chestnut would be next in Grove Street after that. By Grove Street. Grove yeah, because we just did Grove Street. Yeah, not one of them. Yeah. But they don't get it's the, the coatings, which were better in the days when you could use lead paint um, <laughs> and, and volatiles, which which for some reason they stopped us. Uh, but, uh, the latex paints don't, they do not last um, the 30, 30 years. The most ceramic paint. We heard about that from them. Rhino shield. Rhino shield. I, 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 I just I just asked our engineers to tell us what mass DOT accepts for coating, and that's what they put on. So, mass DOT or mass DOT? Yeah, DOT. Yeah, I get it. the same time. <laughs> Their offices are farther apart now. So no, CIC approved this. Any other questions on the South Main Sandpipe Rehab? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Would you recommend? I'm sorry, can we just second? Oh, what? I make a motion to recommend in the amount of $841,175, which is what CIC okay. recommended. There was a typo. Was a typo. Say it again, 841,175. 8, 8, is that on the new one that we have there? No. Okay. It jumped 600 off. There you go. All right, hey, we'll we'll say that. Off, if the errors in your favor, you're going to say it. <laughs> First by Mrs. Grant. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Spencer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Can we interject for one second? I apologize, but because this is borrowing, one of the requirements is that we confirm the useful life um, when we put together the, the um, documentation for bond council. So, Don, are you confirming that the useful life is? Uh, 20 years or less than 20. Uh, 20 years are to be expected. Again, we did the last one in 1998, and it is now 23 years later. And it's 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 not like it needed it for five years and we keep putting it off. It's okay. just beginning to need it now. It's a time to do it. It's in some it's time to do it when you don't when you can do it before you have any kind of rust that causes a lot more pit repair, pit repairs, costly as well as repair actually use welding and therefore the heat um, actually you know. And roll the strength, spot strength of the metal. Okay. Anything else, Mary? Nope. Right? Just so that you all know, we've had that discussion. So mm -hmm. when you sign the documents for the borrowing, it's in there. Okay. Yep. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Pickup truck. Pickup truck. This is uh, to replace one of the older trucks, 2008 uh, F350. We had upgraded the body, so we're going to reuse the, the upgraded body. Just, that's why it's. So less money than other pickup trucks you might see. And it's um, I get to replace a truck that's pretty well worn out. I'm fairly certain this one will not get another sticker of any one. Well maybe we can get one more sticker, but um, it's comes to the end of its useful life. All right. Any questions for Don? Nate is one of your newer ones. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. All right, I'll entertain a motion. Questions. There are no questions. Uh, motion to recommend. First by Mr. Spencer, second. Second by Mr. Martinez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ten wheel dump truck. Ten wheel dump truck. This is quite often with luck you get uh, more life out of a dump truck than just a little over 15 years. This truck is, that has had mechanical problems, uh, power problems, um, almost since we've owned it. Uh, recently, we've sent it up to three different companies to try to solve the power problems. Um, and this is why we don't buy international trucks anymore because they, they have chronic issues like that. But the, it's the 10 wheeler, it's really the water brake truck. Tailgate has uh, a bolt on, a bolt units that we install so they can bolt it shut. We could be filling this truck with a really effectively slop. And it's a 10 wheeler, the size fits in enough to, in a typical, typical water brake, you fill it up once with a slop, we are fixing the pipe while the truck driver is going back and getting a load of clean material to fill the hole. So it's just um, the argument is, and we talked to the capital improvement committee about why, why do we need a 10 wheeler? It's just, it's just that convenient with that. And not, not only that, to have a truck in our fleet that can carry more than, than four or five yards, to, you know, to carry 12, yeah. 12, 15 yards sometimes is uh, very handy. All right, any questions on the 10 wheel dump truck? So it's a freight liner instead of a Yeah, this. Um, what do we look at? It's a quotes in their freight line. That's what yeah, freight line. Yeah. Yeah. have been going. Yeah. Any well, Roland from CIC also pointed out that nobody buys internationals anymore because mm -hmm. of all the problems they have. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Okay. Used to be the They're used to the standards. Yeah. 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 All right. I'll entertain a motion if there are no more questions. I make a motion to approve the 10 wheel dump truck in the amount of $215,000. Second. 
First from Mrs. Grant, second from Mr. Spencer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. PFAS treatment. Okay, this is, the P, the P, this is PFAS and disinfectant by, byproduct rule treatment that we will need to be looking to uh, install at our Hartford Ave plant. Um, the $350,000 requested this year, I believe it's going to be used aqua funds to get, is what Mary told me, for mm -hmm. capital improvement. And what it is is the pilot study and preliminary analysis to determine what's our most cost effective form of treatment, uh, as well as how we're going to deal with the sludge that it's going to generate, coming up with a, a full game plan, and then being able to take that information and design a project to construct the PFAS treatment. So it's, uh, it, it's not going away. Our numbers are, are not having tipped the scale yet. <laughs> when 20 is a number, and we're floating around 18. It's not a comfortable position to be in. So. What's the funding going to be for that? Uh, oh, for, for this, the design, the yeah. 350 would be the ARPA. Okay. Cool. Any Other questions for Don? Mm -hmm. Just that, that 20 number is hmm? isn't that very low. Um, depends on where you go. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, parts per trillion. The EPA was at 70. Yeah. Vermont is zero. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all over the charts. Uh, zero? The, the EPA is yeah, 70. yeah. Vermont makes you shut the wall off if you have any deductible. Yeah. Um, I don't think the EPA is talking about setting a federal standard, mm -hmm. but if the state standard is lower, there would be no requirement that the EPA go up to, I mean, the state go up to that standard. And this, I know the state of Massachusetts, DEP, not to which it has, uh, feels that they've done an awful lot of analysis and research. Uh, so I don't think the 20 going in. Yeah. So it would be. Well, almost you know, unheard of for that, that to happen. <laughs> but then to lower the lower, you know, lower the water quality level by accepting a higher number to the DEP offering the grants to meet that number. Right. Yes, please. If I could just also alert the committee um, that because the funding source would be the ARPA stimulus funding, um, this is not an item that needs to go to town meeting. <coughs> Grant funding does not require town meeting approval since the board, the select board, has already accepted that grant on a, at a previous meeting. Right. Um, you have the authority to spend those funds without town meeting appropriation. So this is bringing it forward to this board and to the, uh, the other boards for discussion so that once we find out the results and we determine that we need to move forward with the water treatment plant, we know that we have invested in the uh, design and engineering and it's not a surprise to anybody. Perfect. Okay. All right, so do we need to vote on it for that reason? Or? You, the, your board okay. does need to vote on it because you are the spending authority for these ARPA funds right, right. now. Okay. Um, so you re would require your vote this evening, but not a town Not a town meeting, okay. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to allow spending up to $350,000 or $350,000 for PFAP treatment <clears throat> based on the ARPA grant. Okay. First by Mr. Spencer, second by Mrs. Grant. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, we're on the home stretch, Don. Sort of. Sort of. We've got one, two, three, four more. So the next item is replacement of well number 12, engineering and hydraulic study. Well number 12 is existing well, uh, water located along the woods at the end of Cliff Road. It used to be our best producing well, and uh, after many redevelopments, is not returning to its permanent capacity. And we need to we need that water. So uh, we've done well replacements. Actually, I think this will be the fourth one since I've been here. Um, it's it's a well replacement. It's within 50 feet of the existing well, which is a, a much reduced level of permitting from Mass DOT, no, Mass DEP side. But that's what it, it requires uh, a hydrological study to determine where you're going to put this well. Uh, you know, so that there's quite a bit of um, sort of Earth analysis, geology, um, stuff that's, that needs to be done. And once that's done, we'll be coming back to look at funding the well construction and a connection of the well to the, the new well to the water system. So that's this is a phase, sort of phase one of a, of a phase three process. And the next phase will be go out at the same time because one of them is a well, the actual well installation, and then there's a 
the mechanical and piping to get that well connected into the system. So the total project would be in the neighborhood of six hundred thousand dollars, five hundred and eighty. That's the we need. Uh, we're requesting two hundred and sixty this year to get the work on the way. Hydrological study. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns. All right. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. That motion to recommend. Um, replace well 12 engineering hydrologic study for $260,000. Second. First from Mr. Martinez, second from Mr. Spencer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Sewer station. The next, uh, the sewer station fob entry system, uh, all DPW employees have um, fobs that they used to get in doors at the DPW building. We're looking to do that at the water stations as well. Uh, we'll be doing that under the regular operating budget, but we'll, we've always had too many keys or too few keys, and keys are a difficult thing to track. This is something somebody's fob can be immediately, you know, immediately disabled in the system and they can't gain access. So, um, but this is for the for fob entry at all uh, nine sewer stations. Motion to recommend. Second. First from Mr. Spencer, second from Mr. Uh, Martinez. Any further comments on the topic? All those in favor say aye. 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 Both. <laughs> SCADA upgrade. Next, next SCADA upgrade, which is SCADA stands for Superior Control and Data Acquisition. It is a, the, elect the electronic system that monitors our facilities uh, the, of the sewer side of it is a much lower key. It's actually, it's called a mission dialer system, but um, the mission dialer, which is a fairly minimalistic unit, uh, they're approaching, I think all, the youngest one we have is probably about eight years old. Um, that's, so they've been around a while and they need to just be updated. Well, in the scheme of the cost of a water skater system, the, this is <laughs> insignificant, um, very low cost. It doesn't really control anything, it just monitors uh, the control, you know, but it tells us when it's a high wet well. It, it, it helps us intercept problems before there's a, a sewer overflow from the from our stations. Questions, comments, concerns? Is, so this is a completely different system than we use it now? No, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's the upgraded equipment. Right. I just it, it used to the initial system that we had was a it was a dialer system. You know, it had, it had the ability to say, you know, one or two problems would come up. We upgraded it over the years to this mission dialer system. We call still call it dialer, but it actually uses radio communication. Goes through the computer system, sends it sends the manager on call alarms, and we can go on it and actually see the level and the levels as they change. We can use it to track flows, use it for I and I. So the, the technology has increased. And we have stepped that up, but the base units themselves are. are I just the, the only I just when you were talking about the eight year old unit versus the estimated life of fifteen years, just because yeah, of yeah, that technology. Yeah, yeah, and it's just this is sort of it's not like every one of them, the newest one probably not going to be, but in other words, it's it's getting the system up to date. Okay, because also we're at the point where if one of them breaks down now, we can't. We just got to replace it. It's not, right. you know, and this is just clean clean house, get everything into good shape. All right, perfect. Thank you. Entertain a motion. So move. Second. First by Mr. Spencer. Second by Mrs. Grant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Last but certainly not least. Last but not least, uh, the Potter Drive uh, sewer station generator. Standby generator. All sewer stations have a standby generator because if they lose power, the uh, sewage keeps on flowing and will eventually flow out with the manhole into the street. It was built in 1991, like almost all of our sewer stations. And this is a, we've replaced one of um, the Crystal Way Station on Canic Street. We are in the process of replacing North Main. Those are the two biggest ones. This is not one of the biggest of the other four that were put in at that time, but it is the one that's had the biggest problems. And it's, uh, it's becoming a service pig with uh, constant repairs and maintenance. And we've been looking to have the funds to do it for a few years. It looks like we might this year we retain earnings, so we get it crossed off the list. I uh, need motion to recommend uh, the generator part of the station for one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Second. First from um, Mr. Martinez. Second from Mr. Spencer. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. No. That's all I got. Thank you, as always, Don. How much did we spend? How much did we spend? Tonight, much did we spend? <laughs> much did we spend? No more than you have. Yeah. Mary wouldn't let you spend more than you have. <laughs>
But Dawn's getting a new 2008 pick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lucky you. 2013. 2013. 2013. <laughs> well, you, you say that, but it's like, the, I, I think this is a police vehicle I've got now. And yeah, it's got about 113,000 miles on it. But it's also, you know, the transmission skips. It's, it's stuff that doesn't bother me. I'm driving around <laughs> town. It's like, but if, if you know, if you've got a police chasing you, just, you know, if we get a police with it, we want chasing somebody. We don't want them to be having the skips. <laughs> have a good night. Have a Thanks, good night. Um, all right. Under other business, we have the um, Uno's um, change of officer. Yeah. The third change of officer, officer application for Uno's doesn't require a public hearing. This requires a vote. And looks like someone's being promoted from. Director CEO and treasurer to director, president, CEO. All right. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. First by Mr. Spencer, second by Mr. Martinez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those no. Gift grant acceptance. Motion to uh, accept the following gifts and or grants $200 from donations for the Silver Lake Vegetation Treatment. Spending Authority, Town Administrator, and one thousand dollars from Charles River Bank for Senior Lunch, uh, senior lunch Program. Spending Authority, Council of Aging Director. First for Mr. Spencer, second for Mr. Martinez. Those are great. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, none. All right. Um, anything under old business? How about new business? Yes, uh, I'd like to bring something up if I could. Um, actually, I talked to Dennis this morning. Uh, I had the, I'll, I'll say the pleasure of, of going to the recycling center a couple of times, probably I think four times over the weekend. And, and I just wanted, wanted to um, just say thank you to the folks that work down there. I don't know if you've been down there at all lately, but that place is immaculate. It's, it's great, really well maintained. Um, there were women out, and forgive me, I remember one name was Dolly. I don't remember the other woman's name. They were raking up leaves. They were doing a number of things. It really was very impressive how it all looks. And, and I know it's all part of their tax write-off. Mm -hmm. So I called Dennis this morning just to ask him, when was the last time we actually looked at the tax write-off and what, what are we spending? And, and Dennis, gave me, it's, it's been a while. Um, it's ten dollars. They get ten dollars an hour, which is less than minimum wage, um, and they can write off up to a thousand dollars. So all I'm asking for the board is is uh, a, a recommendation, or just a nod to Dennis and to Mary, to take a look at the program, see what an impact would be to to bring them up to a minimum wage. Do they do work? And I know we had some problems years ago um, with folks just kind of hanging around, but I, I don't see that as a problem like we used to have years ago. It's it's different. And I know it's, I mean, these folks clean um, Silver Lake. They, they clean that, they plant um, at the town common. There's a number of things they do. And to me, I was a little embarrassed when I asked them, well, I know it's a thousand dollars, but yeah, it's 10 bucks an hour. I, I just think we should look at that um, again. And I just wanted to, the board's um, it's approval to ask Dennis and Mary to take a look at what an impact would be if we were to um, go to minimum wage. So what other communities do? Do we know like what the comparable? We can take a look at it. I mean, that's what I suggested that's, that's, that's to take a look at other yeah. communities, yeah. what they do. My numbers were maybe up, but I think when we had 125,000 and a few years back. That was the cap. Like I don't know what we expanded. Or so. yeah, that was what the cap, the cap the board authorized. So I think we could go back and look at what we're actually doing there uh, out of the, because it's paid for out of, as you know, it's real dollars out of the overlay. So we can come back and do, get you the information, uh, what we're actually spending um, and, and how many people are participating, number of hours, all that information. My only concern would be if we are reaching that cap now, there's less opportunity for other people to do it. Or we have to start capping hours. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. come up with a, a system, a pro, you know, something. I mean, if there are people that want to do it and they don't have jobs for them, maybe there's a rotation, maybe there's yeah. something we can do. And yeah. the 125 was for the senior and the veterans, right? Yeah. Veterans was another 25 on okay. top of that. We haven't had a lot of, <clears throat> we haven't had a lot of veteran yeah. participation in the program. We have had some, but very little. It's worth looking into anyway. Sure. 
we can right. we can put something together. Mm -hmm. Anything else under new business? I just have three quick questions. I think they're all directed to Mary. Oh, okay. So you and I had talked about the debt structure at around 4.2 million. Mm -hmm. With what we've done, does that keep us where you want to be? Because we're on a declining basis. So with what was voted this evening, it actually brings us in under that 4.2. Um, so we need to go back and take a look at it. All right. So the question two and three is, at some point, we need to look at the Petro to level it. I mean, PJ, the old PJ, 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 Cross and dance house. Soon to not be dance house, but we got And relative to the 4.2, what if anything with the DPW on Depot Street? Does that play into that? So that certainly plays into the 4.2, the projections that we talked about, um, including that project in there. So that's why I said, you know, based on what we've discussed tonight, we are under the projection. Um, so we need to we need to see about the money. I'm not suggesting <laughs> that we need to <laughs> see the money. Well, uh, yeah. We need to address priorities. Well, I mean, there's an opportunity. Uh, PJT yeah, situation is, is a vandalism, and if we do do something on Depot Street, the earlier intent that people talked about relocating parks to PJP is not necessary. And parking in that area is a problem. Yeah. Maybe the, the first step would be to have somebody come in, take a look at, you know, LSP come in, take uh, evaluate it for any hazardous waste that needs to be abated. There's going to be some. There's some asbestos there. There's probably the old tiles that need yeah. to be removed. And have somebody uh, get an engineering firm in is what we did with the old uh, center school here, the one down south to evaluate the, the mm -hmm. demolition of the building. So there's a little bit of work that needs to be done. Um, maybe what we could do is get some proposals and appropriate funding for at least that part, the engineering and the LSP for uh, the November town meeting, and then we'll have something to work with moving forward. But the first step is to to get the engineering done uh, so that we, we can't just go in there with a you know you know wrecking ball and start. Uh, you know, yeah. What's the like, size yeah. difference between Green and Bear and BC? The size difference. Mm -hmm. It's a good yeah, question. Well, I had to guess. Okay. Yeah. It, it would be, it's going to be I'm yeah, just wondering how compared, yeah. Because yeah. it was like yeah. five or six hundred thousand dollars, if you remember. That's, that's right. Anymore. That's why I'm wondering if it's going to be, I mean, the price is going to be escalated now with the way the economy is, but yeah. if it's a comparable project to. I, I'm thinking it's a little smaller, but again, I did guess. That's what I yeah. am thinking as well. But. Yeah. Benefit, but so, I can get a, a quote for the initial work that needs to get done. It, it's time. Uh, yeah. There has been vandalism there, yeah. uh, and there is a need for parking. And, and we had spoken, we could ban the on street parking there, which is always a problem. Uh, baseball, yeah. Yeah. baseball, right. yeah. there's plenty of parking in a parking lot. People will park there and not park in the street. Anything else on a new business? All right, Dennis, town administrator's report. Just a couple of quick things. We're working with civil service. One of the things we're trying to do is get that chief's exam uh, scheduled. We know we have a police chief, as, as indicated, he's going to be retiring, obviously, uh, in a year, year and a half. And uh, the, the exam takes at least uh, six months to eight months uh, once it's announced before they actually <coughs> conduct it, because people have to get the reading lists and. Mm -hmm. Send something off to civil service today. Um, uh, a somewhat strongly worded message that we've been waiting two years to know what the schedule is going to be. We're kind of being uh, <coughs> in a difficult position. We can't be the only ones. I, I did reach out to Representative Soda's office. He did uh, contact civil service and, and got no better answer than we had. Essentially, they're working on it. COVID slows things down, but if you go to their site. You see tests scheduled for a fire chief. You see mm -hmm. tests scheduled for police officers and state troopers and everything else. Why not police chief? We can't. There's 351 cities and towns. I don't know how many police chiefs there are, but they've got to be quite a few. So, we 
we are working on that to get that get that moving along because obviously it's, it's an important uh, consideration. I've obviously talked to the chief about it. Uh, and the sooner we get that scheduled, the better. So uh, I'll be keeping the updated date on that one because we're getting into crunch time now. Right? Could there um, be potential candidates out there that have already taken the exam? There hasn't been an exam in years. If you go to the site yeah. in and find when the last chief said the okay. police chief's exam was. So that that's just part curious. of the issue. Are you yeah. suggesting coaching? No, but I'm just so saying there might be someone have, out there that yeah, uh, yeah. I don't you have to know, be on I don't the know list how it is. There's no active list. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. someone that would take the test maybe 10 years ago, pass the test. You have to take it in. You have to take it in. So is there a time? That's why I'm. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. There is no active list. So there's yeah, no active list. Yeah. So anyone that's taken the test passes is likely a cheat. Or the cheat, their list expires. Or oh, their list expires. Not like we we have sergeants exams. People yeah. are on their list. Eventually, the list expires if you're on it, and it expires. You got to take the test. Gotcha. So we, we we are waiting on that. I don't know if the chief had informed the board, but that firefighter grant that we were hoping to receive, we did not receive that. I said there were seven communities in the state that received it, so we, we did not. The same, the same grant? It was the the four uh, firefighters. Yeah, but for for some reason, the state association thought there were going to be quite a few grants handed out. And it was almost going to be like an automatic, but there were evidently seven communities in the state of what we were told. Actually, and they have a greater need than we can. Excuse me. And they have a greater need than we can. Yeah, well, included, I'm sure, the city's boss. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking smart. Yeah. Smart yeah. yeah. Smart Interviews with planner, we, we are working on that. Um, hopefully, we'll have, have a candidate. Uh, we're obviously not rushing it. We're trying to find the, the right fit. Um, Jim continues to work with us. He's doing a great job attending uh, zoning and planning virtually. I meet with them virtually on Friday mornings and go over various things. So uh, there's some good continuity there. Whoever does come in will have a nice transition. It won't be like you're walking into a department where there's been a vacancy for a year or two. Uh, it should work out extremely well. narrow it down to a pretty good candidate. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be yeah. Bring, bring somebody forward. Kind of off topic. Not off topic. What are we, we're doing a off-site not as meeting. structured yeah. as a panel interview yeah. with yeah. 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 that's all i have okay. anything else or oh, just meeting with me yeah right i should have brought that up right why did you bring that up yeah, I, what, what I was going to bring up though, uh, just that, and, and you can certainly bring up that meeting. But um, as, as I indicated, the, the items that come before you uh, that are program for funding, you see the list, a lot of them were FY22 and so they, yeah. they get bumped over. Doesn't mean we've made the decision. Obviously, it has to go before the boards. But again, we wouldn't have those before you if um, we didn't think that um, they were fundable. So we, we spend a lot of time, obviously right. we spend a lot of time with the police chief, the fire chief, and uh, Don a considerable amount of time going through those, trying to get a good understanding. So we're all on the same page when they, when they come Correct. before you. I hope you guys um, didn't interpret my question as being no, no. disrespectful. This is my, I think, fifth time going no. through it. And it's Learn no. something every year, but yeah, respect yeah, no, the amount of time you guys have already put yeah, into it. No, I'm glad you did ask that because you know, it's important that you know that we wouldn't be having uh, cruisers coming before you or anything coming before right. you if we didn't have some sense of how it's going to be All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.